Metalheads, welcome to Graphic Metal, where metal is celebrated with design in mind. All right, you ready for this? We're gonna try to do this. The one of the one of the most heated debates: who is the best singer of Nightwish? If you are not familiar with the band, we got you covered. We did a documentary on them, so check that out. Along with just recently posted the episode where we ranked all their albums. So check that out before coming here for a little more context leading into this big uh, reveal, right? So I don't think that I stress this enough, right, in the documentary, but I want to I want to reiterate: Tomas is the heart and soul, the brainchild the creation, uh, the composer, the everything of this band, right? One, One of the things, things that, that I, I want to give, uh, give give credit to him on is, is that he smartly, and I say this because, you know, creative-minded, you know, brainchild-type folks don't necessarily always have this uh, capability. Oftentimes, you know, when you have your vision, it's like it's like your baby, right? You're, you're passionate towards it. You want to be as involved as possible, right? He smartly realized that he should not be the singer, the front of the band, right? And I think that that was a smart decision, right? Nothing else allows him to be able to focus on the composition, right? So it worked uh, for a lot of different reasons. Second thing I want to call attention to is that there is no wrong answer here. This is my personal take. I'm trying to approach this as many factors as I can. Uh, but at the end of the day, it, like these are all amazing singers. Come on. The, Tomas and, and the, the band Nightwish has been fortunate to have worked with some incredible talent here. You really couldn't have gone, if, if it ended up being that if any of these were the singer of the band, even so to this day, I think it's safe to say that they would still be a success. We would still enjoy this band. The output would still be amazing, partially because as somebody even indicated in the comments, it's like Tomas's vision, him as a, comp a composer, is he's incredible. This was an amazing achievement that what he accomplished just solely for that reason alone. But it's, but purely from then the, the singing standpoint, these are all amazing and capable singers. That even includes if it wound up being just like one of the guys like Marco. If Marco was it, I think we'd still be good. We would still be good. Also, when factoring in the guys, right? Like I, I initially I actually wanted to bring it all of them. Bring, you know, Troy, Marco, Tomas, even himself when he dabbled a little bit, and then the, the three ladies, right? But it broke the system. It didn't. It it it, 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 was, it didn't make any sense. Like, how do you approach it that way? Because it, it just doesn't really work. Um, plus, at the end of the day, this debate has always been about the three ladies. That's kind of what this. That's the heart and soul of this. We all love Marco, right? Marco is such a big deal. I cannot stress it enough. We miss him. Like, this is, it's tough to to now experience Nightwish without Marco because Marco really drove home the theme, that beauty and the beast quality. And he was such an amazing and magnet uh, singer and, and uh, you know, live um, musician and just all around, you know, awesome dude, right? So, but this is all about the three ladies, right? And just a reminder for those who are not familiar, if you haven't watched, you know, if you didn't watch the other one or any of the other rankings I've done is that, you know, Again, rankings are always somewhat biased, right? There's just, we're human, right? It's impossible to completely take that away, right? Take that out of the equation. But I like to bring in different parameters and factors because if nothing else, it trains me to then like, I want to think about it from the different perspectives. And then I like to assess all of it, as, it, it, it together to kind of like see what, what comes out of this rather than it just being me. Well, I, I personally like this one. That's it. Like this, if nothing else, it's pretty boring, right? So, um, so with that said, the five factors here we're gonna do. We tackle the branding first, obviously. Channel love. It's all about branding, right? Branding is such a big deal to me, and 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 cannot be underestimated. You got the skill, the you know vocal talent, right? That they possess, right? Which is not the same thing as the output, right? Which is the third factor, the output itself. What gets delivered? What what comes out of this? Right, and then you have the presentation, the performance live. I mean, this is a music band, right? Live is is, is huge, right? Then you have, which is kind of like the secret weapon in all of these factors. I really like bringing this in when I can. Is is that outside the standalone? So like, what have they done when they were in the band? Because oftentimes it gets like it's like it's like the baseline. It's like 
it's good to see what they've otherwise done with other musicians, with other people, right? I think that that's, there's value there. And then overall, we're going to tally up all the scores and then we're going to find out the big reveal, right? So um, with that said, now we're going to bring up the whiteboard. So this way you can follow along and see what, you know, when I explain this, you can, you can watch what I'm doing here. So got the, the ladies here then now, right? So got Taria, the, uh, the OG, right? So the Dark Fairy also times is called, uh, from 1996 to 2005. We all know what happened. <laughs> uh, but the first five albums, right? Um, Angels of Fall First, Ocean Born, Wishmaster, Century Child, and Once, right? And then followed by Annette, right? As I like to now call it, the Wicked Sister from 2007 to 2012 with Imaginary and Midar Passion Play. And then most recently, the active, current, you know, lead singer of the band still um, starting in 2013 is Floor, aka the Queen Slayer with uh, Endless Forms, Most Beautiful, Human Nature, and now Yester Wind. So, you got the, uh, the the factors here um, laid out here, and then we got you know one through three. So let's get to it. Okay, so we're gonna start with branding. Okay, uh, again, remember Jamas's vision was to combine classical and, and metal, right? And then also you know masculine and feminine energy, like the, the beauty and the beast quality, right? That was kind of the, the 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 heart of what this vision was, this project. So. With that in mind, taking that into consideration, I feel like I gotta say Annette didn't portray that as effectively. She's a little bit more like cute and innocent versus, you know, with Tari and Fuller, there was a little bit more like pronounced um, uh, strength, right? There was some, they could come with another level of power. I think it's, it's most notably in, from a live standpoint uh, you really can tell, right? That's when I think it's really kind of obvious. So I feel like I would give the edge to the other two. With that said, I think when push comes to shove, uh, I it's close, right? They both are incredibly strong. They're both, you know, the attention, all eyes are always on them. Uh, I, I gotta say though, Floor and then... Uh, Taria, and I guess it comes down to, you heard me say this in the documentary, how high I am on, I think what Taria brought is a little bit more of like, I think the adjective I want to say is elegance, right? She brought that next level of like attention to beauty. I think the fashion, right? She, you know, Fuller obviously is amazing as well, but I think Taria took another to another level and it's not just because she is the OG, right? She's therefore by association, how we got introduced to the band and therefore the brand. But I think it's also, it's those, those other intangibles that add this other level to why I think that she brings a little bit more of that elegance, which in return allows for that beauty and the beast theme, that brand to really be drove and driven home. So I, I, I gotta go with that with that system. Okay, so whew, we're gonna get to it. The skill, <laughs> the talent. Oh man, this is it's rough. Okay, I I think I think we all generally would have to at least a bare minimum agree that, and that probably um, is is here and then you know full and Tara just they're they're incredible they're both amazing uh you can't I, I mean we know that they have the same octave you know range capability so can't really bring that into the equation too much uh, um but you know i okay so the thing about them is is that i actually think that taria is better at that you know, pure classical style sound. I do genuinely believe Floor has that capability, but there's something a little bit more profound uh, and just beautiful, right? When 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 Taria sings and she's able to hit those that higher range, which you heard me say I'm not the, the biggest fan of, but it doesn't change the fact that purely from a talent standpoint, and that's a huge skill. Not many people can 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 do what what they can either of them can do, but Taria, I feel like can can she's better at hitting those higher 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 tones. I I, I do believe that. Um, but with that said, we're talking about overall, like Taria with Nightwish and also without Nightwish in, in her in her own solo career. I wouldn't say that she has presented. 
um, as much range, like overall range. Now, when with Nightwish, it could have been that you know she was just responding and relating to what Tomas was you know in the band was looking for. But again, then there's a standalone, and she doesn't really change it up that much. I mean, I just think that Floor has ultimately showed, presented more co complete, you know, full range. I mean, if nothing else, let's, you know, go for the obvious, which is that, you know, Floor can bring baritone screaming into the mix. That's not something that Taria really has ever done, right? So I, I gotta give the smidgen edge to the floor overall with regard to pure overall you know skill um again it's close it's really close but i gotta give the edge four okay so output right so this is also um it's tricky probably you know it, it's tough right obviously um you know that i'd be very tempted to, to, to do this, right? We all now know how much I'm a huge fan of Dark Passion Play and uh, Imaginarium. And a big, and I, I, I can't, I can't stress this enough. I, I think that there was an advantage to the fact that Annette wasn't quite as profound of a singer. I thought that actually worked in their favor, in Tomas's favor, because it allowed it to be more on like, a, here's the band. And there was a little more experimentation that happened during, and most importantly, I just, I love that, that Marco was used so much more during that time. I, again, with once as well, um, but I just, I, those three in particular, I just, I love the overall balance and that driven, um, you know, masculine, feminine, and range that was presented, that Beauty and the Beast, you know, sound was, in my personal opinion, perfected during that, that peak time. Um, so I'd be tempted to go with there. And I think that it's also not much of a surprise to most people because I feel like generally speaking, overall, the genuine, you know, general population does, is not quite as high on the most recent three albums as with any of the other um, works. Again, it could, you know, for, be, for obvious reason um, that, you know, Tomas has not been quite as electric in um, you know, his inspiration from a composition standpoint uh, during this time being so much more focused on many other aspects of life and that's just the nature of getting older. Um, but so I don't I don't think that it would be too much of a stretch to say that from an output standpoint that Floor and the last three albums are not as strong as any of the other works. Uh, but with that said, I can't do this. I have to do, I have to do this. I, because look, I mean, as much as I like those albums, it looks not like the other albums, the first five albums are no, 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 uh, they're amazing. They're unbelievable. And it's five versus two, right? So I just, I, I have to go with this. I, I have to. There's, there, to me, I would, I would, I would think that generally speaking, this would be one that people might, somewhat agree on but <laughs> i've been surprised uh, so uh and it's this band this band's always a, <laughs> a fun debate okay so the live presentation right i think this one's a little bit easier for for me anyways again i've been fortunate to have seen them all uh the band with with each of them so i think that that helps even though it's been quite a number of of, of years now naturally with when it was with with taria but with that said I got to go with, I don't think Annette's as strong. Uh, I just don't. I don't. She's not quite as, the, the other intangibles, it's not just purely that singing. She, they all are amazing at singing live. They are. But I feel like the other intangibles, the other qualities that come with your ability to present and engage with the audience, um, you know, I mean, heck, nothing else. You know, this is metal right in the headbanging factor, right? Like Annette, the, the headbang. You know, she kind of bobbled, you know, bobbed a little bit. But generally speaking, you know, Taria and Floor, even more so with Floor, um, you know, they bring other intangibles is all I'm saying. So it's a tough call within each of them. I already mentioned that I really liked how Taria brought all the different, you know, styles of fashion um, and put that extra level of attention to detail. Um, but... The ability to connect and present the music. Even people have actually commented, I want to say, that like the original songs 
that were created during a time with Taria, when they've been sung by Floor, especially live, they kind of been amped up. But there, there's something a little bit more uh, just profound when 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 Floor. I've been utterly impressed with with her her ability to, to to sing live, and she's just electric. She's intimidating. She's powerful, uh, beautiful. She's she's just it's just it's it's. I gotta go with the edge with being Floor. I, I have to. Um, so, like this. Okay, so, um, last but not least is the, you know, what have they done outside, uh, from their time away from, from the band. Okay. Oof. Yeah. Um, don't underestimate, uh, like, Annette. Like, Annette actually has some, some sound stuff, uh. You know she's done some on her on her on her own solo name, and then also with a few other folks. I want to call attention particularly to uh, uh, the the more recentish. You know during the pandemic, she kind of worked with Russell Russell from from Symphony X. Uh, it's the first one is actually pretty good, not, not as high in the second one, but that first one is pretty strong. And I think that most people who like Nightwish and Symphonic Metal would actually pro pr would pr pretty much enjoy it. Um, but at the same time, I mean we're talking about freaking Russell here. I mean. Talk about talent, singing, whew, uh, one of the all-time legends. I mean, one of my personal faves. I mean, you can't really get, I mean, oh my gosh, like, yeah. So I, I so I can't, I can't boost up too much uh, of Annette's street cred outside of the band just for that reason. I, I still would say Annette um, as being at the bottom and then... For and Taria, it's it's tough. I mean, Taria has a very successful solo career, right? Of course, um, but again, I don't I don't know if it's brought a whole lot else, you know, to the fold. Um, I just I think I, I have to go. This may be where my sub sub subjective uh, feelings come into qu into play because I was always a huge sucker for for After Forever. I loved After Forever. I really did. I wasn't a big fan of Revamp when so when After Forever disbanded and then and she got to Revamp. I wasn't I wasn't high on those two albums as much, but I really liked After Forever. I thought there was there were some good things that they that they did. It wasn't all great, but you know it was pretty solid. And again, remember they were they were super young. Floor was super young at that time. Uh, but I also I want to call attention to uh, Aryan. So when you know hit her work with Aryan, I, I really like that stuff, and I like Aryan in general, um, and you know just everything that comes out of that Star One as well. And so so I gotta give the edge. I gotta give the edge to the to, to floor. Um, I, I yeah. Okay, so here we are. We're we're at it. We're at <laughs> we're at the. Uh, uh, the overall so let's 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 see what we got here okay so yeah okay so no no surprise probably here though probably people were probably nervous that I might go with uh, Annette because I'm so high on on uh, the you know the, the those two albums star passion play and imaginarium but I mean I think I don't think that there there's too much of a shock here I feel like you know this argument has always been primarily about Taria versus floor Right. Let's call it what it is. And so... <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, no. I, I should not be at all surprised this happened. Yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> yep. It went as such. It was actually this because, of course... We have a bloody tie, because if this if, if if this isn't proof in the pudding enough to indicate why this is such a heated debate, there we go. We ended up with a tie. They are both on the same equal level. <laughs> oh man. Okay. All right, but I, I I can't leave it there. I can't leave it there. No, I can't. I can't can't do that to all y'all out there. Make you watch this whole thing and then end up back to square one, exactly where we where most of us are still at so okay all right all right all right so if i if my life is on the line i have to pick one of these well, right off the bat i could look at it from the standpoint of so i mean you know t taking away their outside you know time i mean just doing the band i mean there we go you know 
two for for Taria, the branding and output delivery a little bit stronger for Taria and floor uh, with the overall potential more skill theoretically but hasn't necessarily had the best output and then of course the, the live presentation but from the outside standpoint if you want to factor that in you got three versus two so i could go with there but i i, I think uh, i mean they're both i, I like them for for, di for different reasons i don't think that there's anything wrong with choosing taria on the sole basis that she is the og it's how we got you know acclimated into this band it's how it's what created all this right so absolutely can't go wrong with that i can't explain it why necessarily you know for that that theoretically has a little bit more range the output just hasn't been quite there but i have to believe that that's less about her per se and more to do with just the timing factor you know, like I again, I can't keep bringing this up, but it seems because I mean, Tomas keeps bringing this up that like, you know, it's a little more of a struggle these days compared to what it, what it was in the beginning. It's just natural. You have so much more energy and excitement and passion in the beginning. When you get older, you just get older, right? It comes with a lot more, you know, baggage that comes with the life. And so I have to believe, if I'm wearing the hat, if I'm wearing the hat of Tomas, I think when push comes to shove. You got, I, I, I think it, it, it's got to be this. It's got to be this. Because, as I indicate, okay, bonus point. Sure, why not? Okay, oh. Um, and then, like this. I, I, I got to go here. I got to go Annette, then Taria, then Floor. Because Floor just has shown to have a little bit more range. It just comes down to that. It just comes down to, I just, there's a little bit something extra. Uh, the, the intangibles, right? From a live standpoint. I mean, just when when each of them headbang, right? They headbang a little bit differently. But before, there's a little bit level, another level of electricity. When they're singing, again, I, I do think that Taria is a little bit stronger at classical. But Floor can do that. Maybe not quite as effective, but I think that it's over. I think it the overall range that she brings. She brings that that baritone screaming when 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 needed. And again, from a Tomas standpoint, like thinking about the tool of being able to what I can what to work with. Like I think I think I think it's floor. I think it. I I believe that. That's that's. I'm leaving it there. So that's my that's my take. Oh, man, I can't wait for the, the comments. <laughs> let me let me let me know. Okay, so that was Nightwish. Now I'm switch switch gears. Okay, I'm excited. Uh, so Blood Incantation is up next. Super excited. Uh, we're switching to death metal, right? Even though let's be honest, they're, they're no longer a death metal band. They're just not. They're they're so much more, right? Which is exactly the reason why I wanted to to, to proudly uh, talk about and showcase this band because an incredible band, right? What they're what they're doing, they're escalating things. They're bringing, you know, they're exper experimenting in ways um, and pushing the envelope. And I just I love. I have so much respect for them, and so I can't wait for that. Um, and yeah. Until next time, I'm Veer Von Wright. You've been watching Graphic Metal. Cheers and keep on rocking.